And I rise to speak on the Building Legislation Amendment, Domestic Building Insurance, New Offences Bill 2023. And I'd like to start by acknowledging uh, the work of uh, the Minister for Planning and her office and her team. And of course, all the stakeholders that have been included uh, in this uh, bill, and that's the Housing Industry Association, the Master Builders of Victoria, the Urban Development Institute of Australia, the Victorian Building Authority, and of course I offer my congratulations to Anna Cronin as the newly appointed C CEO of the VBA, and I wish her well in improving the um, VBA in its regulation of this industry, and certainly uh, things need to improve. Uh, this bill will amend the Domestic Building Contracts Act 1995 and the Building Act of 1993, to make sure builders are covered by domestic building insurance, as well as enabling uh, the Victorian Building Authority to be the lead regulator, to ensure that builders comply with this insurance uh, requirement. And of course, this is just the first in a series of reforms to better, um, better protect consumers who are building or renovating their homes. Uh, and, and certainly we've seen, and the examples have been highlighted today, uh, of why the consumers need that protection, uh, in particular the reference to the Porter Davis situation. So people save um, you know, for many, many years to get to the point of you know, putting deposits on building a new home. And uh, if things go wrong, and certainly at times things do go wrong, uh, you know, uh, it becomes quite devastating uh, for those consumers. Uh, and look, you know, we definitely have a substantial amount of work to do, and as I say, this is just the first reform uh, and many more to come, and uh, it will be part of a total package, and uh, putting it into place, safeguards and protections, uh, is important work, and I want to thank the Minister again and their team on the substantial amount of work they've done and have yet to do with the other uh, uh, bills that will come forward. Of course, this is not a complicated business, uh, and to put it simply, builders just need to take out the domestic building insurance or they'll face some penalties and it's as simple as that. And I've got to say uh, that, you know, this, is a, this has been a growing problem. And I know many speakers have said um, there are some fantastic builders out there and this is only a minority, minority of builders that... Um, act in this way and not take the insurances out. But I've got to say, uh, my experiences in my electorate, one of the fastest growing electorates in, in the state, uh, it is more prevalent um, of the dodgy builders than the great builders. And I've seen many, many ex um, examples in my electorate. Uh, and I've got to say, it appears to me that uh, the dodgy builders are doing this just based on total greed. They think they can build houses and pump houses out very quickly. Um, I won't say cheaply. Uh, they sign up people. They deliver the end product with many, many defects. Um, they think they're untouchable. They use unlicensed and unregistered tradies. Um, they don't care about the dispute process and they just sit on their hands and, and basically bat consumers away. Um, yeah, you can go through the dispute process and try and resolve it through the DBDRV, uh, and if it can't be resolved, then the punters are off to VCAT, um, which takes a long time to get into VCAT to try and get your building dispute resolved, and it costs a hell of a lot of money. Engineer reports, um, legal representation, uh, and in a lot of cases, uh, the consumer can't afford those things. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's been offers of resolution, even at conciliation, and then the builder's not coming forward with the final um, resolution to the dispute. And in one particular case that I've got in my electorate, um, the physical and mental anguish that it's caused to this particular consumer um, actually put her life at risk. And... Um, that's how damaging it can be with your life savings going into building a new home and then you get a, a dodgy builder take for granted that they can take advantage of you and think that they can get away with it. Uh, and I think this bill is really important in regard to the insurance and at least the consumer can have 
I think, some confidence that things are being done by this, this government. And again, as I say, this is only one measure of trying to improve things, but there's a lot more to do. And of course, the collapse of the Porter Davis Group, you know, we all know, and it's been spoken about before, led about 560 of their customers uh, with homes uh, that were not even under construction to learn that they um, had not taken out the insurance, uh, the you know, domestic building insurance for their con contracts. So of course, um, you know, there have been other builders that have collapsed uh, since Porter Davis, Snowden's and Holbury uh, Homes. Uh, they also uh, uh, did not obtain the domestic building insurance uh, to protect their customers' deposits. Of course, um, you know, this insurance is mandatory for contracts where the contract price for domestic building work is over $16,000 and it provides protection to homeowners in the event that their building project cannot be completed or has defective works, which cannot be rectified by their builder. And in some cases, I mean, even if it could be rectified by the builder, would you really want them to repair the damage that they've created and all the defects that they've caused? Um, I think I'd be looking for someone with a better quality. Uh, but that's even more difficult, because who takes on these defective bills? Uh, of course, in April last year, um, we compensated the Porter Davis customers without domestic building insurance for their lost deposits. Uh, and in July last year, we set up the Liquidated Builders uh, Customer Support Payment Scheme to support customers of other builders who hadn't obtained domestic building insurance and whose businesses collapsed between 1 July 22 and 30 June 2023. Uh, of course, the Allen Labor Government is always willing to help out Victorians in any way we can. And we wouldn't have needed these payment schemes if these builders had taken out domestic building insurance. And again, I come back to the point about the dodgy builders. The reason why they don't take out this insurance is they don't want to pay the money. It's all based on them making profits, um, making profits and, and probably, you know, in a way, um, scamming against the consumers uh, and dragging money out of their pockets to fill the builders' pockets and, and um, not delivering you know, a, a good product. So of course, um, out of this bill, there'll be two new offences which will apply if a builder enters into an insurable major domestic building contract. Um, and, uh, and, re and of course, if the builder receives money from or on behalf of the building owner before holding the required insurance. There's two different penalty levels applied based on the seriousness of the conduct with a higher penalty to be applied if the offence is committed knowingly or recklessly, and the lower penalty applies when the offence is committed, even if there was no intention to commit it. Of course, um, if they do commit these offences, they could face a penalty or a fine of up to 500 penalty units, which is around $96,000, with fines of up to uh, 2,500 penalty units or approximately $480,000 for body corporates. And I'm sure everyone's sick of me talking about dodgy developers, which I've done in the past. Um, but of course, in some cases, and in particular in fast growing electorates like the Meltons and the Wyndhams and the Tainites and areas like that, uh, and even in the northern suburbs and the southern areas down the Cranbourne Way and all those, Clyde and all those areas, a lot of these developers have got a lot to answer to. Um, signing people up to these deals with the, these builders that they use and knowing that um, they may be using unlicensed and unregistered tradies, um, doing it on the cheap, uh, trying to make massive profits, and then in the end collapsing, uh, and, and unfortunately not being covered by uh, the insurance. Um, I want to make reference to, um, and I've only got a short time, the Melton TAFE, and that's being set up um, primarily to provide uh, construction trained workers. And we're talking about up to 600 construction trained workers out of the Melton TAFE. And that's also an assistance going forward about training people appropriately that they will be proud of what they do within the construction in the industry, in the building industry. They'll be proud of the products that they deliver. And hopefully part of that will be not ripping people off that's the issue, that's the key issue, you know, avoid the greed. This is a very important bill and I commend it to the House.